again. All right. Morning, everyone. Welcome to the Steaming Pile, soon to be renamed uh, Tea and Biscuits with John and Chris. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I haven't got the biscuits. So I've got some cold tea. I only, I only got it half right this week. I don't have that. I have my cell phone. I have a toy horse. That's all I got. <laughs> not sure the significance of the toy horse, but why not? <laughs> oh, my daughter sends me. I'm working at the computer, and she'll give me presents. Oh, right. So that That's was, nice. uh, yeah, that was yesterday's gift. That's nice. That's cool. I will uh, I will keep the old Vim chat here open to good. see if anyone pops up. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, what's going going on over your neck of the woods? I see they're playing around with some, uh, uh, what do you call them, caucuses. We don't have caucuses over here. But yeah, cool. that's an old school form of... Uh, of trying to decide a, a presidential candidate. So still haven't had the results yet. A technical glitch. <laughs> I don't know how we live in the 21st century and this stuff still happens. Oh, it happens. You should try our health service. It's all done on paper and they lose the files still. Yeah. So, what the hell? Yep. <laughs> put it all on the blockchain, damn it. I once questioned them why they don't put it all online and they said, oh, we couldn't afford the space. We'd run out. No, I think they said we'd run out of hard disk space. <laughs> Blow me. <laughs> you probably would. You probably would. They yeah. probably wouldn't have any idea how to how to set it. I mean, come on. You got to be able to set it up. If Bezos yeah. can do it, if Zuckerberg can do it, <laughs> you know. And at some point, they probably will and charge everyone dearly for it. But sure. Yeah. So that's going on. We got the old uh, coronavirus. How's yeah. that going? It seemed like it was doubling, but. Uh... It's still Doesn't... going up well. Yeah, it's still going up well. Curiously, I saw the CDC say uh, put out a tweet just a, a wee while ago saying face masks won't protect any, uh, offer any level of protection. And then also today I saw a tweet from the uh, from China saying it's now illegal not to go out with a face mask and you'll be arrested if you don't have one. Oh, my goodness. See, conflicting so, reports. Yes, yeah, so I don't know who to who to believe. Um, but I would, I would say <clears throat> manufacturers of... Uh, face masks and sanitizing gel and everything was uh, probably making a few pennies out of this. Mm -hmm. They're <laughs> doing sadly, fine. Sadly, sadly. Um, it's, uh, I, I always felt I could have been a YouTuber on Sunday because we went to uh, a couple of stores and I thought the sort of thing a YouTuber would do would go around shops clearing the shelves of every hand sanitizer and everything. In there. <laughs> and we went into one of these big bargains uh, stores and they had little bottles of hand sanitizer for uh, i think it's three for a pound so about three for one dollar thirty oh my and goodness I had, I had quite a big shelf of them and, I, and the whole lot probably was about thirty forty dollars worth and i thought for a laugh shall i just clear them all into my trolley and live stream it right and see what reaction we get but i thought <laughs> no i'll leave them for others so we just had three i think but um so uh, when you say trolley do you mean car uh, a cart, yeah, you know, a shopping cart. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, got your yeah, cart. I was going around the store. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I thought that would have been quite fun for a sort of YouTube-y <laughs> type of video. <laughs> Just go around all sorts of shops. Did you get your mask? Uh, the one I, you I ordered? I ordered them from various places and none of them have arrived. <laughs> They'll probably arrive about next December, I suspect. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll just keep a low profile here, I think. But yeah. If the CDC say, CDC say they yeah. Uh, they don't make any odds then i'll uh, maybe i'll send them back and say i don't need them okay but it would be good to watch that one but yes twitter's a great place to get conflicting evidence you can just sit sit and watch it fly past you saying one thing and a minute later say an absolutely different thing. oh so, i love twitter i'm still you know it's it doesn't do anything though when there's when no one's putting anything out no no I, uh, I could, I've never really been a social media person until I came to Steam, mm -hmm. and then it was through Steam someone got me on uh, on uh, Twitter. So I have a yeah. little go on it. I'm not not a great Twitter. There was a aficionado. There was an app developer who had this thing called Share to Steam. I don't know if you were if you remember uh, yes, that at I all. I remember seeing it. That but, one disappeared, uh, didn't it? Yeah, it disappeared, and I don't know. I don't really know why, but I thought it was I used it a lot because you were able to anytime you made a post to youtube twitter or instagram it would automatically post to steam and uh, i found that very useful and it was actually 
I, it's too bad it went away because I think for engagement purposes, the the Twitter functionality, because the, there does seem to be a lot of Steamians that use Twitter. And I think that that's kind of an untapped area for us to to band together and kind of talk about Steam and, and push stuff out to folks. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been propelled because there's been quite a lot of uh, sort of incentivization of, of people saying, you know, go and tweet this and show us your tweet and we'll give you a, a, a vote. So it's been very incentivized. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know how effective it is or otherwise. Uh, I mean, a lot of it is, you know, people on Steam up, uh, retweeting and liking other people on Steam. And, of course, uh, <laughs> the whole idea yeah. is to get outside of it. So I like throwing a few tags in there uh, to see if you pick up pe- people from elsewhere. I, um, I did put one out the other day, which I, I thought was good. Not a lot of people have appreciated it because my... My daughter, in, uh, do you have it in the states? I don't know. That there's a there's a thing in January here called Veganuary, where they were trying to get people to go vegan in January. Oh, gotcha. Uh, which is uh, quite a loggerheads with the farming community, as you can imagine. And uh, and she she liked doing it, so uh, she continued into February. So I was debating what uh, what the February word would be for it, but then I made a little joke saying maybe she were going on Saint Vegantine's dates on. Oh, the 14th don't of do February. that. Which I thought was funny, and someone, a couple of other vegans, thought was good as well. So there we go. <laughs> I got two likes for it. So yeah, we made a breakthrough there. I right? think it's a little but, corny. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> we, uh, we uh, my wife and I started doing that, just eating more kind of raw foods and less meat and all that. Like me, l- less meat, her less bread, and so we'll we'll do five days where we'll eat nothing but vegetables and like vegan food and then we'll have two days where we like to go back to what we would normally eat yeah. where she'll have yeah, bread we were, or crackers something like that i'll have more cheese and meat stuff like that yeah we used to be totally uh totally whatever um but uh it was in fact when i did one of my uh shows on msp about i did a uh, vegan and vegetarian yeah vegan special i think it was with a whole bunch of vegans off steam and mm-hmm. uh, that didn't didn't cause me to go vegan i didn't quite got vegan but i, I did go vegetarian i was still vegetarian at the moment vegans uh, are partly also a reaction because uh you know we have a homestead as as it would be called there it would call it a small holding but um we kept pigs for a while and we um uh, just blank this bit out because any vegans listening we had um three uh, <laughs> three pigs that uh we slaughtered and butchered, and uh, uh, that was a hard job uh, butchering three pigs in a couple of days. But um, we then got rather bored of pig products, to be quite honest. Yep, <laughs> so yep, yep. Getting through tons of sausages, bacon, chops, and the rest of it. <laughs> After a while, you get a bit bored of it. I've got to be honest. That's so, true. Yeah, uh, we we still keep chickens. We don't eat any of the chickens at the moment. Um, we have their eggs there. Um, it's like laying in the winter because we've got a much warmer winter at the moment. Our the winter is very warm. We don't. We haven't had a whole lot of snow yet. Knock on wood. No, we've had a few frosts, but nothing better. Nothing um, much. So. Do you have a lot of land where you're at? Uh, we got seventeen acres. Seventeen um, acres. Okay. Big barn, small barn. Uh, we got a couple of barns and uh, a lot of the rest we've got to uh, forestry. We, we planted about six years ago. Gotcha. Which which is interesting because it was all much of Wales. Mountains are just uh, clipped bare by the sheep, very intensive sheep farming. Mm-hmm. So um, it's changing the ecology a lot and we're getting a lot more uh, small mammals and the like coming on. Really? Uh, we've, got, we've got pine martins at the moment, which are quite rare in Wales and they've, they've been reintroducing them and they've just spread what kind of animals See, are those i don't know what those uh, are pine martins are small the... animals about so big um quite vicious they eat squirrels and other small mammals oh really so they're like um, kind they of used to be common but they they were trapped and persecuted a lot by gamekeepers because they would take out uh, game birds so uh, they were more or less wiped out in wales and so they've been reintroducing them and i i uh, i found a, a mother and five little baby ones, I don't know what you call baby pine martins, and she was incredibly defensive of them, because I, I tried to get close, and it <laughs> really uh, made me jump back a bit, so um, yeah, they, they're quite, uh, I wouldn't want to be bitten on the, the leg by one, I don't think, they're, they're really quite, uh, got big strong teeth, so 
I would keep well away from them. Gotcha. Um, you guys are free, right? You guys are free of the EU. Do you feel any better about that? Uh, Do you care? No, I mean, uh, until December, everything's more or less staying the same because okay. uh, about nearly half of the, the clients I have in my business are in Europe. So we had to work out how we were going to deal with the VAT taxation and whatever. But luckily, we haven't got to. Uh, you don't have to worry about that until next until year. 31st December. So, so um, technically, you're free. But you still is it is it going to cause like some not hardship but it's probably going to cause some difficulty next year having those um, conversations the, uh, and the doing total that transition havoc it's creating. I mean, one of our big clients uh, is in the chemical industry in um, in Europe, and he was saying he's now got to try and mesh the UK rules with the European rules because before all the rules were the same, now they're not. So, and he was saying some European um producers because they have vast numbers of regulations about product safety and whatever mm -hmm. and he, he was saying the costs now for them to do all their their sort of product safety regulations to be whatever the uk regulations may be when they come out are so great they probably will just stop bothering to sell into britain because it'll be more than what they get out of it so we may get things we can't get um i'm pretty sure there'll be some loss of jobs because car companies, for example, Japanese car companies that have been here thinking they could sell into Europe won't be able to do that. So they'll probably just shift to Europe. Um, wow. uh, Tesla chose Germany rather than Britain for its European base, which it might have chosen Britain if it uh, if we'd still be in the EU. So I, I'm struggling to see what the benefits will be, to be quite frank. Right. I don't know. I think it'll end up being a bit of a mess, but probably by and large. We'll still end up paying taxes and all the rest of it, so uh, it won't make a lot of odds, really. Yeah. It'll just be a mess for a year or two, I think. But gotcha. Okay. We'll see what happens. It's probably going to hit the well, the universities in Britain. I mean, a, a big chunk of students at university are, uh, well, in, interesting, two big chunks. One are EU, uh, European students that will now no longer come over because they would have to pay. Previously, they paid the reduced rate of fees if they were from Europe. Now they'll have okay. to pay almost double so they won't bother to come to britain well, apart right. from a few and the other big 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 chunk of students in britain are from china which at the moment of course um are not coming over which so, is probably uh, a good thing uh, yes there's there's been two outbreaks uh, <laughs> um, from a student that came back and uh, and um a family member i can't remember what relation it was but uh so uh oh sean's here hi sean um so yeah, the, that's going to be one to watch. Um, I think you've got quite a few more outbreaks in the US at the moment. I think you're up to about nine or ten or something. I think, aren't you? But um, I, I'm th I believe most of them are still people coming back from China. So yeah, there was one. We had one potential incident in Columbus or Cleveland. There was someone who actually came in from Chicago. So they're looking into that right now. So nothing really local yet but possibly close yeah so yeah. but it doesn't yeah. sound like it doesn't sound like uh i i don't know about the rate of death of the virus but it doesn't sound like it's um deadly it sounds like it's more of a something that can be contained and controlled and yeah i mean it's it's curious uh, depending how far you want to go on the conspiratorial uh, trail but uh, it's it's odd that it's not spreading faster outside of china in my mind um because uh, i mean near enough everyone you read reckons the figures the official figures are probably about one tenth of what the actual figures are but then that makes a disparity between china and the rest of the world even weirder because right. i mean I, I don't think other countries would be hiding the figures so therefore the low figures in other countries are going to be real and the the ones in China are possibly only a tenth of what they might be. So there, there's a, a ginormous gap between the two. Um, and uh, it, it's slightly odd that. I, I, I mean, the the big thing I think in China was that before the quarantine was imposed in Wuhan, uh, of the 11 million people that lived in Wuhan, uh, 5 million left the city. So <laughs> now those people are spread all over the place. And that they have now tracked where those people went and I think something like 120,000 or something flew out of China around the world and uh, two and, and a half thousand. Is it possible uh, that some of those people that left could have been infected and not known or? 
Oh, oh, very much. Yeah, that that's how gotcha. it's been spreading okay. so much. Uh, I mean, Japan has had them in various places. A lot why would half? Out. Why would half of the population leave? Because they made the drastic mistake of announcing a quarantine happening in a week's time. <laughs> oh, they're like, hey, by the way, your whole you, you, this area of the country is going to be quarantined in seven days. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it, yeah, I, I didn't see the full details, but that was the big essence of it. That, oh my that was gosh. The big, epic fail really um you know with a, with a quarantine you sort of got to do it there and then um and sean said he has they had one around there he's over in washington so that's ah, the so west coast yeah. yeah yeah keep keep low profile um, that's on uh, that's great nice. yeah well we're gonna quarantine you but you got seven days <laughs> yes so yeah large large numbers went at I mean, the, the figures of where the flights went to, the top three, Singapore, Japan, Thailand, I think, of where they went to, is exactly the same as the top three of where the most infections are. Um, Britain had two and a half thousand people left, flew out of Wuhan to Britain, and they've managed to account for 2,000. So there's 400-odd four, still at large that haven't been uh, haven't been tracked down yet. So Wow. Uh, so, yeah, it's interesting... Uh, interesting times going on really so uh one thing like steam related that i thought we would do is because the latest steam news that you put up is really really good and it has a lot of uh things that that we've wanted to talk about uh specifically like content and uh, some onboarding and a, a little yep. bit about communities and tribes so maybe we just kind of dive in and as we as we go through the subject we'll just click on a link and talk through it and and give some shout outs to some of the people that you've already mentioned in steam news because there was some good stuff in there yeah i, I don't know whether maybe just before we do that yeah. I, I put up this post about contests last night which um i don't know if you saw that one win with steam contest roundup yeah for sure i saw that at the i that's also in the steam news yes isn't it yeah. at the bottom yeah, I, I don't know if you, if we have a quick look at that one first. The, okay. the, not to go through the contest in any great <laughs> detail, but I, I I did this once before, almost to the day me, a year ago by chance. Let me. Um, I have it up here. It's the one that you did 16 hours ago. So let me share yeah. it, and then I'll share it with you so you can see it. So then we're all yeah, on the yeah, same page. Yeah, if you page, want to so. pop it up. Um, and it was a bit sad because quite a few of the contests that were regulars last year had gone but you know other ones had taken their place but the, the thing i found most amazing is there are so many contests on steam mm -hmm. and particularly if people are starting out i mean it's an easy way to, to sort of make connections and an easy way to win and um, some of it some of its steam some of its um tokens some of its upvotes etc but many of these contests have very few entries um which is partly why i did this to try and uh, try and get uh, you know get a bit more traffic to the contests because it, it you know it takes a bit of time to run contests so it's you know people that run contests when i've done them it's always great to get more people more people interested in them a lot of the tokens you can earn tokens by tagging right uh yep yeah, yeah so um it is uh yeah so i have it up i have it up here you can you see it yeah yep yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I wouldn't say easy pickings, but, you know, it, it can be fertile ground if it, it's probably a lot easier to win some tokens, some steam, some upvotes through doing a contest than it is when you start out trying to get some traction on your posts. Mm -hmm. um, because some of them are, are totally easy. I mean, some are just guess, guess, you know, there's a couple of guess the price of steam and uh, guess the start price of Bitcoin. So, you know, you're in with a shout, just make a guess. Others are um, write a post about this or that. Um, there's one here from Felt Buzz. Uh, write a story in 240 characters, um, and you can win SBI shares and post rewards and various tokens. Um, there's one in Steam Chat that all you've got to do is guess a number, and uh, you can just free to enter, go along, guess it. Uh, I mean, there's a whole whole pile of, of stuff out there. I, I've probably only got about half of the ones around it, and I'm sure there's many more. There's a lot in here. Yeah, uh, uh, there's more specialist ones like playing organ music, writing reviews of restaurants, uh, loads of those, um, uh, writing about your favorite beer, um, doing little Whoa, cartoons. I'm listening. 
Yep, yeah, we go for the beer one. Uh, Detlev does, he's been doing, that's one of the really long-running ones. I can't remember the number, but he's been doing it for a, a good long time. Uh, yeah, he's on week 138, so two-odd years there. Um, an interesting one, which I'd never seen before, if you go up a bit from there into the top section, the arts and crafts, I mean, mm -hmm. there's one for designing a logo for the sort of standard stuff. Um, but the second one, love the clouds contest, um, take a photo of some clouds, etc. But the one that caught my eye, which I'd, I'd never come across before from World Builder, was uh, draw a map for a, an RPG game. Um, and this month on the theme of a small tome to an un tomb to an unknown hero. So if you're into gaming, draw a map, submit it. You've got a chance of winning 25 Steam. Wow, um, that's cool. And he did loads. comment on there too. He commented something like, you don't need to... Uh, yeah, I, I misinterpreted how he'd written it. So you, you can put a grid in it or you don't have to put a grid in it, depending right. how you want to do it. So, yeah, I, I, I'd say to people, go out and have a go. And I, I came up with a little hashtag. I like hashtags. I'm getting a hashtag. I can't get into memes yet. I haven't got memes, but hashtags I'm just getting to grips with. So my hashtag was hashtag win with Steve. A little bit corny, but I thought it was decent. So, um, yeah, you can come and win free stuff. Who so you like free And stuff? so you can put... What would you suggest they do with the hashtag? Do use it in uh, Steam and use it on Twitter? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, just another little eye catcher. Everyone likes to win. It's one of those sort of trigger words. Yes, I'll win. It's free. True. Um, you know, no one's gonna. Uh, and some of them are so easy. You know, just guessing a number or whatever <laughs> doesn't uh, doesn't take a lot to guess a number. But you know, taking pictures of clouds. Um, some are more involved, like drawing the maps and Splinterlands art and stuff, writing a restaurant review, any restaurant you go to. There's, you can do that on Taste Steam and on um, Jeff. I like Jeff. this. Make a make a comic strip about Pinky and Spiky. Yeah, I, 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 I never sort of uh, checked that one out so much until recently. But uh, Organ Duo, he, he and his uh, wife or partner, Laputa, say they've been doing that a long time. They, they actually, I didn't realize they actually have books out on Amazon. It is a proper sort of cartoon strip. Oh, okay. Uh, Pinky and Spiky, and they've just published two books on Amazon. Wow. Uh, they're, they're little characters, and they invite people each week. They have a, a theme, and you pick up on the theme, and you, um, you sort of draw little two or three cartoons uh, for it, and you can win, uh, well, there's 20 Steam uh, prize fund. Yeah, you know, all smallish amounts, but, you know, they're good. Yeah. Um, Agro has got, uh, if you want a bigger pot, he's got one down the bottom. Uh, I just want to guess the photo. And Sean, I... Sean, just so you know, we do we go for an hour here on the revamped steaming pile. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. It's Agro. Yeah, he's got one. I think his prize pot was 100 steam, I think, just to... Prepared Wombat is doing a guess the price of steam. Uh, Agrode is doing the best, guess the price of Bitcoin and Steam. At the time of uh, having. Yeah. Uh, so there's two prizes of 100 Steam there just to guess a number. Uh, I so you guess. Quite yeah, but you have to get it. it. You have to know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, it, <laughs> anyone can take a punt. True. So you've got the sort of guesswork ones or you've got the artwork ones or you, you know, there's something for everyone. Take a picture of your pet. You know, that's... Uh, uh, and because the, on a lot of them, the numbers of entrants are really quite small. You know, you, you're not going up a thousand other, against right. a thousand other people. You're probably going up against half a dozen, a dozen other people. So in contest terms, you've got a pretty high chance of winning some of these. And there's so many of them. You know, if you just went through and entered every one of those that you could. A 2000 steam power delegation. Yeah. Again, not too bad. What's cooking redfish contest? Write a post about why you love steam and share it on Twitter. Yep, that's for anyone with under 500 SP, I think. Yep. That, that's Sergeant. Yeah, that's Sergeant Dan's one. Good job, Sergeant Dan. What that's about, I, I like the beer one. I want to bring the beer one back up because you know a little bit more about it than I do. So tell me, it, it, yeah, I, it I, looks I, like I, it says I, Beer yeah. Saturday. Yeah, I think every Saturday you can um, post uh, a little story about why you like a particular beer, put some pictures. And I think OCD are now throwing in boats on it. Detlev's been doing it for two years odd. And uh, every Saturday, and again, I don't think he has a massive number of entrants. So you've got a prize of six steam, four steam, two steam, and some beer tokens, and OCD votes are on offer there. Week 138. 
So do you just yeah. use the so in order to get the beer tokens, do you tag it beer? I, I assume so. I can't remember the exact details on that one, but I think you probably t tag it with beer or beer contest or something like that. It would be a Saturday. I think you probably tag that one. Let's look at it here. So yeah, I mean it's it's a yep. you know you, you you don't have to write posts to earn earn on Steam. You you could just end you know spend your week purely entering contests and you you know if you're particularly if you're starting out and haven't got an audience you're probably going to do better out of just entering contests than you are out of uh, writing posts. That's a very good you, yeah. That's a good point. I mean, it's not it shouldn't be a discouraging point. But it's good, yeah. right? It's just yeah, like, I mean, and it's also yours, another way to meet people. Like you seem exactly. to know a lot of people just by helping to curate and and, and the work that you've done on yeah. in Discord and with MSP. So, and as as we know, I mean, it's it's knowing people on Steam that really makes it work. Mm -hmm. You know, if uh, you you see some people come here, particularly you know, YouTubers will come plop their youtube uh, videos on not engage with people not connect with people not get in, involved with any people and then they disappear because they don't pick up any traction it is networking on steam making connections is so important um and contests are a great way to do it uh, with the added bonus that you uh, you know you can get to know a few people they'll remember your name if you keep entering their contest make comments etc then you know if you start making posts there's a good chance you're going to pick up a few more uh, a few more votes um which is you know that's what it's all about i would yeah uh, yeah i, I would I do it for that reason i would also do it because i want to get i would want I, I do like the thought of earning tokens with a post like in yep. addition to having post rewards but also being able to earn tokens because i think what they're what they have going on over there at steam engine and then what we're hopefully see sometime soon with uh, other token capabilities within the blockchain. I think having tokens to either stake now or, or use later will be a good thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I, I'm not, not massively involved in any of the tribes at all, but I, I interviewed someone I did that tribe talk show, and the ones that I've sort of picked up on that seem to be, if you can use the phrase, sort of front front runners who are you know making a good show of the ste of the tribes um i mean the ones that really seem to go for it include people like uh, steam leo i mean they're really going for it mm -hmm. uh, john golson's click track profit ctp um and uh, one that I, I think is really interesting is um, reggae steam um i mean they're doing some full-on stuff in jamaica i mean they're actually getting uh, you can with your jam tokens uh, that you earn from reggae scene you can actually go and book travel tours and uh, you know stay in hotels and all sorts of stuff i mean they're, wow. they're, they they were already connected with the tourism industry in jamaica mm -hmm. and i mean that is a fascinating case and i would say probably one of the most uh most successful ones so far because they're actually getting out there and taking that token into real real world use. Uh, who is the who's the person that that, that uh, does that? Donald Porter D. Um, D. Millis, I think it is. I mean, they'd be great people to get on the show. Um, I was just thinking about that. Yeah, I had them on uh, on one of my shows, the Tribe Talk one, the first one, I think. And yeah, Jamaica, the time zone would be all right for Jamaica, wouldn't it? Because it'd be similar time zone to use. So. It won't be uh, sort of three in the morning or anything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, remind me after I've got okay. their discords. But yeah, they, they, they're doing some fascinating stuff. And they've got in, uh, if you go down to the diary date section of the Steam posts, of the Steam News one, if you go down, got the diary dates, if we just hop down there. Um, the last diary date, I think, is if we get there, there's the block party coming up. But uh, next Jam one, Fest? Jam Fest, yeah, that that is looking like it's going to be a big event in Jamaica. Oh man, um, I wish I could go to that. Yeah, go for it. Take your holiday in Jamaica. Get it. And if you if you start posting on Reggae Steam now, uh, you can get some of it just by earnings off that. True, that's true. Um, Blockchain and is... Seminar Expo, Entertainment and Cultural Experience, Crypto Tourism Initiative, and oh loading a picture that's why it took it away look at that yeah i, I think that's uh, you know that's one of the 
most exciting things I've seen coming out of uh, Tribe so far, along with what Steam Leo is doing. Look at that resort. I mean, Natural Medicine is another good tribe as well. They're, they're worth a look. But yeah. Okay. And that they've really, they're really managing to get, you know, the Reg A Steam token, the Jam token, along with Steam, sort of hooked in to, to real world. And they, they've teamed up with Leo Shop as well. So their tickets you can buy through Leo Shop on Steam Leo. So that's a that's an excellent piece of cross sort of tribe liaison. So and is Steam Leo a, is Steam Leo a front end or what is it? Uh, it's one of the tribes they're they're using the original <clears throat> nitrous condenser, the you know the Steam Engine version of Steam it, and then they've been customizing it. And I think they've got their own site as well. I think reggaesteam.com or something like that. They've got their own site, but um, that's definitely one to watch. I mean, if if you are if you were looking to put your money on uh, a no financial device, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we all know the stuff. I'm not a financial expert. I can just relay of the people I've spoken to on, on various shows and things. But and if uh, you get if you guys are out there watching the VOD or you're listening live and you have a tribe or community that that you want Pensive to pay attention to in either his Steam news posts or you want to come on here and do an introduction about your tribe or your community, um, make sure that you come on and and we'll make that happen. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the ones that I, I find, uh, as I say, some I, I know nothing about, so I can't give any comment. But the ones I've spoken with, the people, Steam Leo, uh, CTP, um, Jam, uh, Reggae Steam, and uh, Natural Medicine. I mean, they're the ones I sort of follow mostly. And um, there's others I, I don't know anything about. There's also the Eco Village movement as well, which is another interesting as one as well. They're actually building a, a steam powered eco village in Portugal now. Um, Eco Alex and Orlev. Wow. Uh, they've actually bought some land and are now working through the process of getting permission to build, etc., etc. And I discovered, in fact, there's a second e eco village in Denmark going on with some steamians as well. So there's two eco villages if you're if you're into that sort of stuff. That's really cool stuff. That really is so, neat. Um, yeah, I mean, and I, a, uh, Steam Peak here, the website has a spot for tribes. Last time I clicked on it, it wasn't working as well as it had. But um, I know they're trying as a front end to support communities and, and be a place where people can post. Uh, yep, I think I saw their, their trialing. I think it was uh, Natural Medicine. Someone posted yesterday they're actually trialing uh, the integration of the Hive communities as well as the tribes as well. Gotcha. Now. Okay. That's up and coming. Um, because I, that, that's one of the sort of weaknesses of uh the communities uh, uh, they're all just sort of lookalikes of steamit.com so as they move to the point where they can start to customize them i think that's going to have add a, a much more sort of depth to it i think than just say here's another lookalike yep so um, anyway that was a digression off into okay. uh into um contests and which of these Steam, et cetera. which of these stories do we want to talk about i like the actifit and app picks joined for the get in shape challenge Yep, I, 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 where where me. tribes and different apps are coming together, I think that that's very interesting because, as I mentioned, um, Reggae Steam were linking up with Leo Shop Steam Leo there, which was interesting. A Apic, Apix, and Actfit are coming together for this Get in Shape challenge. So I think when when different tribes and different apps come together, that that sort of spins it up a notch. I think. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that shows how. Th that is a, a good use case to show how dynamic the the blockchain can be if we can also integrate token support into our thinking, our content promotion, and, and, and the way that we're working w w with people. Yeah, and I mean, Apex, I've always, you know, they are very slick with their operation. I mean, they have a very, very... Yeah, I have yeah. both of them on my, on my phone. I just act a fit. I have... I have. I need to be. I need to have exercised in order to have posted. Yes, I, I've <laughs> never actually tried. I don't really use a phone much because we don't have any uh, signal here. But uh, gotcha. uh, by all account, Activate is very good, and Apex. Um, Apex is really slick. It's it, it's yeah. a good. Yeah, I just I mean, ever um, since they appeared on the scene, uh, you know, you looked at them and think, mm, <laughs> I wish Steam could do some of that. You know, with their marketing was. Uh, you know, so far ahead of uh, Steam's marketing. It's, uh, 
<laughs> you think are they really really from Steam? Do so they uh, do you know? Do they store those f f files uh, on their servers, or do they actually? I don't know. I mean, that's that's an interesting, just as a side shoot, an interesting issue that's coming up because you might have seen about people are finding their busy uh, photos on old posts on busy are disappearing because um, very few photos are held on the blockchain, if any, because uh, they can't. Uh, they can't so people have used their own servers and that's the same with video um mm -hmm. you know generally that is one of the weak points of it the post can be held on the blockchain but the the assets the the video and the and the images can't so something like busy which i believe is not being attended to anymore is losing its images um and that's sad i mean um i can't remember you want, one you mentioned earlier had gone um Partico has gone as well. Busy Partico's gone. gone. Shared esteem. Shared esteem. That was one. Yeah. So and, you know, people try these things out, and they work or they don't work. And obviously, price of steam comes into yeah, play. Yeah, the price as well. of steam comes into play, but then also ongoing development. You know, yeah. fixing bugs yeah. and fixing issues and things like that. So yeah, and so I guess it's whether they reach any sort of critical mass. Um, I was surprised about busy because it was very popular, and likewise Partico. I mean, that was extremely popular and. Uh, and it, it uh, I mean, that's because the, the, the guy running at Cedar, I think he's got some big millions from venture capital for his other project called uh, Buzzbreak, is it, I think? Um, and I checked on the App Store the other day and it had well over a million downloads um, for his other project, not on Steam. Gotcha. Um, and I, I guess the temptation of <laughs> of millions of users and millions of VC venture capital funding versus whatever the numbers might be on steam uh, i guess one can know which way you're going to go on that one um but uh yeah so it's a bit sad but i mean there's quite a string of things that have come and gone on steam but you know zapple remember zapple no uh zapple was a early steam version of twitter i think that one disappeared um and then there's things like Demania token bb went. what happened to token bb that is still going, yeah. That is actually now run. I can't remember who started it originally, but uh, Build Team took it over, and it is out there. And it is, a, I don't think it's gained a massive amount of traction yet, but it is out there, and you can use it, and it is being maintained and developed. If you want a Steam-based forum, okay, good. Um, What's I Spud think... X? I see Spud X on here. I've uh, Spud, never heard uh, of it. Yeah, Spud is Steam Power Update. Uh, street style once a month on the first of the month uh, every month and it's now they've just had the 10th one on the first of february he runs a contest to encourage people to power up the steam from liquid steam or if they're powering down to stop powering down and uh the the people who proportionally to their their starting point proportionally power up the most steam can win big prizes um, and this one had 16,000 uh, SP of delegation plus various other prizes as well Wow um, and obviously if you've got a small amount of steam to, to start off with then proportionally it's easier to, to get higher than if you've got sure. a big uh, big amount to start with but uh, yeah those three people uh, got some very uh, very tasty delegations uh, I think for a month if I recall so build team, we just mentioned them, and you—they're in this number five story. Yeah. The D lease added a scalable microservices infrastructure. Yeah, that, that's more tech, I think, than anything else. But I mean, D lease—I um, don't know if you ever used it. You can you can actually you know either lease Steam from it, the delegation, or if you've got spare Steam power, you can lease it out and get a fixed payment every day. Very slick system, and I think they just make a margin in between the two. Hmm. Um, that's kind of cool. I, I know, yeah, I haven't heard anything like that. Yeah, I I think currently the going rate is about thirteen odd percent uh, return on it. So if if you're if you've got steam power that you're leasing out, you'll get about thirteen percent return on it, um, which is possibly not as good as the the best curation efforts, but better than the average hunter just putting out there and clicking on a few things to vote for. Right. So um, and, and then. <laughs> the people leasing it uh, they're commonly using it for various curation projects or whatever yeah it's uh, tough for me uh, it's tough for me to do curation the right way i think sometimes i get lucky 
right? Yes. Not, not necessarily <laughs> like ne not necessarily because I'm doing anything intentional or on purpose. I just get lucky. But uh, uh, something like this where you could do it and uh, allow another organization to do it for you, I'm I'd be fine with that. Yeah, I mean, curation, I mean, you can also delegate direct to um, Curangel and the various uh, um, delegation services, mm -hmm. the various curation services. The, uh, I mean, it's the, the, the easy way to do curation and get a decent return, of course, is just find the big players that always get a substantial vote and put them on auto vote at four minutes. Um, you're up against many other people doing the same thing, but you're going to get a, a decent return on it. But that sort of defeats the whole point of the curation because it all just gets concentrated in a few places. Right. Uh, I, I don't bother with that sort of, I had in the past tinker with it, but now I, you know, I, I primarily I look through every post every day uh, to make the Steam news and those that I think are interesting. I just vote on them until I run out of voting power and then start again the next day. Yeah. So mine is, I, I don't bother about um, you know what time it is. I just vote because they come up when I'm looking. It's it's hard work to do curation, full on and to the optimum efficiency. You, you know you've got to be sitting there all day spotting the winners. Really. <laughs> you would have to do that in order to be successful. That's a lot of time uh, invested yes, for yeah. not a lot of return. Yeah, uh, I mean some people do it as a, you know become expert at it and they get in their 17 percent returns or whatever but you've really got to be on the case for that one i think yep thanks everyone for your upvotes sean vim dude on the web thanks for tuning in canifest Hi, travel everybody. fund update you can you can go to uh canifest in oregon pensive yep. Uh, yep indeed yeah that's another i mean there, there's three big steam events in the Americas in June. There's the Reggae Steam one, the Jam Fest we mentioned uh, towards the end of June. There's the Block Party, which I think is going to be in New York State, which is in, um, and that's the Alliance primarily, Engine Witty, Guilty Parties, Bluefin, Dream Steam are organizing that. That's the second one. They had one last year. Um, this year they're adding an extra spin to it. Bluefin Studios is organizing a Steam Summit, and I think he's hoping to get... Is it going to be in New York City, or is it going to be in upstate uh, no, New, New York? York State. I can't remember exactly. It wasn't a place I knew of, but it's somewhere in New York State. Okay. Um, I'm, closer, I'm closer to the west end of the state. Yeah, so you'll be closer to Canada. So if it's, in Buffalo, in... if it's in Buffalo... No, if it's in Buffalo, then that's like three hours away. Yeah, Rochester, is... about I'm about 12, 12 hours from Manhattan. All ah, right, yeah. If you um, if you in the diary dates, if when we get there, it'll tell you where it is. I can't remember exactly. Oh, okay. Place, okay. Canafest is in Portland, if I recall, and that's a week before the other two. It is. Uh, Sonic Groove that took the place after the uh, unfortunate demise of Open Mic um, hasn't quite picked up the same traction as as Open Mic had that ran with Lucifer for two years or whatever it ran um, that had bigger prizes I think that was backed by a top 20 witness at the time <coughs> which gave it bigger prizes the prizes are a bit more modest but still decent I think the first prize gets 100 steam if I recall um, uh, they're very much looking for more entries, I think. Um, and like is that winners. just submitting music? Yeah, you, you, you sing a play, similar sort of format to um, open mic. You play music, sing a song. It doesn't have to be your own composition or anything. Uh, you just have to make a video on YouTube or wherever and announce at the beginning um, you know, what it's for, just to give it uh, you know, credibility that it is for the, the competition, not something you've nicked off elsewhere. Gotcha. And then um, Isaria, Crystal, a few other judges. I'm afraid I can't remember the names at the moment. The um, judge each week and award the first, second, third. And I think there's a community choice one some weeks as well. So if you're into music, another contest, which I didn't actually put in my list of contests. I didn't. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, I did have them in there. Yeah. Um, yep. <clears throat> What's number eight? Uh, that's the um, a Venezuelan project of Votovuzla. I'm not quite sure how you um, Votovuzla. Yeah. Uh, how you pronounce it, but I demonstrated my immense power of the Spanish language. Um, 
which I understood a little bit, and then I asked my wife, uh, she's Chilean, <laughs> for the rest of it, but uh, um, yeah, they, they run very good, uh, in Spanish, very good little educational workshops they do, I think live, I'm not sure, on various uh, crypto type projects, and they're just restarting them. Okay. We're still burning steam, that's good, right? I guess that's yeah. good. Yeah. I, I don't know how much impact that's making. I mean, it, every little helps, I guess. But I think in that report, Dow shows you know, what what amount it is versus the total, and it's not a great deal. Um, <laughs> Blue Robo, he does these steam engine charts because I don't think you can see charts in in steam engine itself. I'm not sure, uh, but they're always interesting. He does them continuously, so anytime you want to see how a steam engine token is performing, it's worth hopping over to Blue Robo. And he's usually done a chart quite recently, and you can see what's going up, what's going down, what's going anywhere. Good. Um, so uh, it's always worth checking that out. Um, did we miss the ones right at the beginning? I think the Review Hunt and Steam Ambassador. Uh, uh, what's it? Yeah. Splinterlands Ambassador Program. Yeah, Review and Hunt. Review just, Hunt. Uh, Steam Hunt have launched a new version of Review Hunt. Uh, it's very slick. You can put uh, quests on there uh, if you want people to do anything like resteam your post or review things or whatever, and you pay them. And on the flip side, if you want to do the tasks, the quests, you earn money for it. And it seems in four days, they've already generated. That's 3, faster than it used to be. Yep. Uh, I think it's instant, instant payout or something I read now. I can't remember exactly now. And it's not but, on Steam anymore. No, it's on a separate chain, so yeah. I think it's distancing itself uh, from Steam directly. Um, but um, I, I think a lot of Steamians are going over there because it's a, another token to collect, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it's fairly big numbers. I mean, three thousand three hundred yeah. dollars in in four days is <laughs> not to nothing. Be to, at. Right, I was just going to say. Yeah, uh, Splinterlands have launched an ambassador program, which uh, I've sort of written about ambassador programs for Steam. They've obviously got the resources to do it. I think they're looking for people to go to small gaming shops, etc., um, and introduce Splinterlands to them, give them some startup cards. And I, I think I, I can't remember exact mechanics of it, but I think there's a sort of split of five, ten percent between shopkeeper and um, uh, and ambassador to take a you know, cut to in, incentivize everyone to do it. I think there was some debate in the comments, which were quite interesting to hear from people that had been involved in those sort of schemes of whether the percentages involved would be enough to warrant entice people. I, the, I, I don't know on that. I, what they would get out of the program. What are they going to get out of being an ambassador? The, um, the joy of yes. being an ambassador? Yes, yeah. I'm mean, going mean, to guess everyone wants a bigger, a bigger percentage cut. So, uh, working who gets what percentage is the tricky bit on that. And yeah, you're, it's one of those things you're probably never, never going to please everyone. Basically. Well, you also have to have an idea of who you're targeting and and what your goals are for who to bring in in order to, to measure. Yeah, I, I think Agro's put some quite uh, sort of outlines in there of what sort of target. What sort of size shops? I, I, he's obviously not going for the big chain, chain stores, but the I think he specifies ones that have got less than five shops in a group because obviously that's the smaller end of the market that you're more likely to make progress with. Gotcha. As soon as you get into a bigger chain of stores, they're just going to say, we're going to refer it to the regional manager, etc. So, um, yeah, so that's an interesting one to see how that goes. I mean, Splinterlands are pushing out there to, to get the name out. So. And that's the name of their game. That's the name of the game now. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was formerly Steam Monsters, but yeah. they wanted to... Uh, How long ago was it. that that they did that switch? Do you know? Um, six, seven months ago. Okay. I think it's when they started getting involved with Tron because they did a fundraising uh, thing on Tron, and I think you can buy Splinterlands cards from Tron, etc. Um, so I think, obviously, they needed to have a slightly more generic name. Right. Um, so that's why they went Splinterlands. Um, I've, I've, I've dabbled in Steam Monsters Splinterlands, but never had the time to get in it. I, I think if you've you know if you've been in it from early on, I think just on the one hand playing the game and earning cards, etc., and two just if you're into trading, I think it's been a very good place for mm -hmm. trading. Yep, I still have my cards. I don't do a whole lot of playing. I did some playing, but uh, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's I cool. think it's like then, anything, you know, you've got to yeah, divide up job. the time and decide where to go and what yeah. to do. And you have yeah. to like that kind of stuff too. I think pe- I think people that really will like that collecting and battling and things like that. I think it it still holds a lot of appeal to 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 those folks too. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's not something I've massively got involved in at all. I mean there's a whole bunch of new games you know quite a constant stream of new games on stream that the latest one is holy bread uh, yeah we talked a mass- little bit about that last week yeah i mean and it'd be i saw interesting some to get someone uh, I, I don't know the people involved but it would be interesting to hear from them i, I think i posted in the previous news they'd got off to a really good start had a thousand plus players on it um in the first few days so it seemed to be catching attention of people um it's it's tricky I'm, I'm not a sort of a game expert so i can never tell and make a judgment but it, it it's most of the games seem to follow the same pattern that you know you get a rush of people in and then it's after a week or two where you start to to get a vibe from people whether they think it's a you know a stayer or a goer really right so it's probably a bit early to judge uh holy bread but i mean i've i've not seen any negative stuff about it which is is a good sign good any negative stuff coming from the Steam proposal system? <laughs> yeah, it's a funny old thing, the Steam I, proposal system. I, I, I like that there's two uh, two proposals for the the uh, power downs, one to yeah. reduce and one to vote against reducing, all both written by the same person. Yeah, I Just mean, Crypto Drive, he, he, he's in favor of the reduce reduction and then... People were saying, "Oh, you know, you need to balance this out." So he chucked both of them up there, and obviously, it's not really what the Steam proposal system is is designed for. But it, it's an interesting way to do a state weighted vote. But um, oh, oh, yeah. how long is the power down now? Thirteen weeks. Thirteen it used weeks. To be two, two years, I believe. Oh wow! And then it's thirteen weeks. It, it's a very tricky one because. You know, people say it won't. You know, people won't invest in Steam because you know you can't get your money out quick enough. Uh, if at the other end of the scale, if you go for instant power down, which some people are talking about in exchange for maybe a ten percent burn, so you pay a ten percent fee. Mm-hmm. And of course, if the market's rising and you want to grab it while it's rising, you're probably willing to to give the five or ten percent cut. Um, the four week one, I mean, the other part of it is, of course, if someone steals your keys, the power down protects you because they can't get your steam power out. It's a very, very tricky one. I, I'm not, I mean, the four week one, if you're of the view that it will do better to attract uh, investors, then the four weeks is better than 13 weeks. But still, in investment terms, it's probably irrelevant because if the market's moving up quite quickly, uh, in the volatility of the crypto world, four weeks is is an, an yeah. epoch really because you know by the time you get your stuff out in four weeks it probably would have gone back down the other way so you know you, you need to move in days or hours really when you're trying to play the market so any sort of power down time period gets in the way of that so all of these projects most of these projects are so above my head i i as a user ha- am aware of some of them and have used one of them but uh they all it's interesting to know that they're out there Yes, they're all. Apart what is a potato Seagull. top up? SBD potato top up. Uh, that's where you take money out and burn the SBD to again try and push the price of SBD back up to a dollar. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> Not sure it's having a ma- major effect. Um, all of them are sort of tech dev type ones, apart from Steam onboarding. Um, I did put that post out last a uh, few days ago. I can't remember how many days about um using the sps to fund um buying in external marketing people which some people thought was yeah good. did uh, anyone like that so idea a few did yeah i think a balance more did than didn't i mean you know there's a school of thought oh we should be able to do it ourselves and you know why spend money on external agencies <sighs> the, the trouble is we have been trying to do it ourselves and you know best efforts people don't have the time the skills whatever um I'd rather just say, particularly because you know the money's sitting there. It's it's it's, it's there for the purpose. Mm-hmm. Let's take some of it, try a, a, an external marketing agency out. There is a small risk that you know they take some money and they don't do what you want. But of course, there's not really a risk because you just write into the contract that these are your you know this is what you've got to achieve. If you don't <laughs> don't achieve it, you don't get the money. So it's it's quite simple, uh, and it's uh, you know month by month job. So. 
I'd be interested to see if it would work. And I, I calculated you could get about eight, nine thousand dollars a month out of it, which would be about a third of the SBS funding. Okay. Um, and you would get, you know, you, you you want to go all in and get a proper professional outfit, and, and to get one of those, you're not going to get top of the field uh, stuff, but you are going to get a good middle ranking PR and marketing agency for that sort of fee. Give them a go, see what happens. Um, and you might say, oh, well, you know, thirty grand is could be a waste, but then if you think of the vast amounts of money that the millions that have been spent by steam over the past year with nothing to show i don't think gambling 30k is going to be you know neither here nor there and it's it's not coming out of anyone's pockets because it's it's sitting there in the sbs for that very oh, purpose of right. promoting steam of, oh okay uh, gotcha it's not going to cut rewards because it's already come out of rewards so yeah i would be interesting i'm surprised the they haven't have they taken marketing proposals from current steamians uh, no, no one's put it in. I, I mean, your chance of getting a proposal accepted is very... Difficult. I just wonder if, like, Starkers or some of those other people that you uh, you know are, like, do marketing and things like that. And, and like, if there are uh, I, other I mean, I think they're busy on there. their own yeah. apps. And, and that's the trouble. Any, anyone within Steam... They're going to want it to go through them. Yeah, and I don't think anyone in Steam... There may be people who are professional marketers, but, you know, they haven't shown their faces yet. And um you know that, that's why and also I, I think i mentioned in the post i think it would be good to have someone we just give that to money steam. to stephen kendall uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh oh i wasn't trying to pour salt on any wounds or anything no i don't have any i didn't know what i just don't think that'd be a very effective way of doing it. um well maybe not all 30 grand of it no i i, <laughs> well, we I, got... I think we need someone outside of steam because anyone in Steam is involved in the politics of Steam, the tribalism of Steam. They're wearing the, you know, the, the blinkers of Steam. I think, you know, if we're trying to get to the masses, I think we want someone from the masses to take a, a, an outside view of Steam. Um, obviously, they've got to be briefed. And, and I, I wrote in the proposal that, you know, they could come and do discovery uh, forums or whatever, and they could report back live on MSP or the Ramble or somewhere every two or three weeks of what they're doing so the community can get engaged with them. Um, but it's, you know, some people said, oh, no, we could do it ourselves. But, you know, for example, Foundation needed legal advice to set up the company. They didn't say, oh, there must be someone in Steam that can write legal contracts. They went and paid 25 grand yeah. for a legal outfit. And, and it's just you use professionals for what they're professional at. Um, I got you. And, I got you. Marketers are going to be cheaper than lawyers. And, you know, it's how you write the contract. You you write the contract with certain performance indicator, you know, for certain milestones, etc. If they don't deliver, you don't pay them next month. I mean, it's it's, it's simple as that. Um, you give them a clear brief and away you go. All right. Well, we got a minute or two left. I don't know if I want to talk about the Steam Foundation unless you tell me there's no, big uh, news from uh, them. But I am interested in this new community, the beer community. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to pick up on some of these communities because they're not getting a, a lot of uh, Yeah, that's, this coverage, definitely sounds but... like a community that I can take part in. Um, maybe I can use the app picks uh, ActiFit thing to offset my membership in the beer community. Yeah, but uh, uh, so... I mean, it, might be, it could be interesting to get Detlev on this show. Uh, he's in Germany, so the timing would be all right for him. I think he's an hour ahead of me. Okay. Two hours ahead of me. Any other hot ones that we want to make sure that we're getting in and, and being part of the show? I think that's it. Actually, this is just the yeah, I think dates few coming up. Yep. But yeah, uh, Reggae Steam would be good to get if we can. Okay. So we'll work on debt level. We'll work on Reggae Steam. And uh, what we've been doing with the steaming pile is I've been doing a promo post, and then we'll do the, this is the live, uh, the live taping, I've called it, or the live stream, and then tomorrow I'll post the VOD. Oh, cool. I see we've got a f uh, couple more people. We've got Frank Bacon and Sean. Oh, hey, what's up, Frank? Uh, he says Stephen K can promo like a mofo. I won't say anything at all. Uh, I've never heard you've been rendered speechless before, Pensive. This is, this is a steaming pile first. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> all right, everyone. Well, we're gonna go back to we're gonna go back to our 10 a.m. time 
next week, 3 p.m. Uh, UTC next Tuesday. That yep. works for you, yes? That sounds good to me. All right. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you for your upvotes. Pay attention to the VOD tomorrow. And uh, we appreciate you all being online and, and watching our, our live broadcast of the Steaming Pile. Pensive, thanks again. Been good fun again? Good. Yeah. Well, I shall get the tea and biscuits next week. I will, too. <laughs> Be interesting to see which, uh, which biscuits... Jaffa cakes I'm on at the moment. I saw you had a Jaffa cake to open up last last week's yep, episode. Yeah, they're so. still my favorite. Sometimes chocolate digestives. All right. Cool. All right, everyone, this yeah, is Steaming like Pile, yeah. and we'll see you next week for the Steaming Pile Tea and Crumpets edition. <laughs> tea Bye. and Biscuits edition. Yep, grand. Goodbye. All right, everyone. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.